Good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Cooper, known as the Channel Guy Trader, and I'm reporting to you live from Wall Street Trading Satellite Office down in sunny South Florida. Today's date is Thursday, March the 21st, 2013, and here is today's After the Bell Market Summary brought to you by WallStreetTrading.com. I want to first start off by taking a look to see how the indices close the session out here for us today. The Dow Jones was down a little over 90 points. The NASDAQ was down a little over 31 and a half points here. And the S&P 500 was down just about 13 points. If we take a look at the breadth today, more negative breadth coming into the market here with a little bit more favor to the bears. We had 4,225 issues declining, and we had uh, 1,854 issues advancing on the NYSC, NASDAQ, and the Amex. Therefore, breadth was in favor to the bears, just about a 3-1 to one there. If we take a look at new highs for the session, we did still have some new issues making new highs. We had 355 issues making new highs and 34 issues making new lows in the NYC, NASDAQ, and the Amex. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this market here, starting off with the SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF. SPY closed the session down $1.33, 0.85%, closing the session at 154.35. All right, you can see we're right on top of the 20-day simple and exponential moving average, like I discussed in the After the Bell Market Summary video the other day. If we break below this key level right here, actually, let me just move this over right here, but if we break below... 153.30, the next level to watch is going to be the 250-day simple and exponential moving average, which lines up to be right here around 151 half. All right, 153.30, 22 area is the area that we're working off from this little previous resistance. Now access support. We came towards that at level on a Tuesday. We bounced off of it, and uh, that's going to be the next target. Back down towards Tuesday's lows will be the next target if we were to sell um, some more here today, tomorrow. 153.59 was the low from Tuesday, and then again below 153.59 we have to worry about 153, and then we break below uh, 153.22, and then if we break below 153.22 we're going to be looking for this next target, like I said, around 151 uh, half. If we break above today's highs, which was 155.64, we're going to be looking for a move up towards yesterday's highs around 156. In the short term, though, you can see that 156 is acting as resistance. All right, and you can see that this 153.25 area or so is acting as support. Uh, once we break outside of this range, whatever, whichever direction we break outside of this range, we'll determine which direction we're probably going to go for the next uh, couple of days when that does happen. All right, so keep that in mind there. Let's take a look at the triple Qs. All right, the triple Qs were showing some nice weakness today. But one thing to take notice of today, though, was that the uh, Russell 2000, was actually the weakest index on the board today. It was the Russell 2000. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Russell 2000 first, and then we'll take a look at the uh, triple Qs. The Russell 2000 uh, was down 0.88% today. It was uh, closed at 93.87. Was down a dollar and 83 cents. It was the index that was showing a lot of relative weakness compared to the other indices intraday, and it did lead the market down today. But as you can see here, it bounced off of its lows. You can see how this key trend line that I've been tracking with you guys is coming into play as we bounce off of it today. However, if we break below this key trend line and then we just break below this whole area right here around the 90, let me see, around the uh, 93 half area, we're going to be looking for a move back down towards these 92.69s, 92.70s. Same thing for the SPY, how it had this little prior pivot high right here that we broke through. So now it's got, going to act as support. We got to watch the level down there around 92.70, which also lines up with the rising 20-day uh, simple and exponential moving average. Our top side levels to watch is 95. All right, we take a look at the triple Qs, power shares triple Qs. We've been mentioning the fact how this uh, triple Qs is in a nice little rising bear wedge. If I take off the moving averages right here in the studies, you can see the pattern a little bit cleaner here. All right, we have a nice rising bear wedge that's going to be in play. That it's kind of in play right now, but it's not really in play until we break below the trend line and we get some confirmation, we get some consecutive closes below that trend line. That trend line is going to be around the 67 level. So if we break below 67 and hold, then I think this pattern has a chance to play out. And then we definitely want to start uh, looking for some weak technologies, or technology stocks or some stocks that are weak that are, of course, in the triple Qs and look to get short those names. All right, if I put the studies back on the chart, you can see that the triple Qs, they are below the 20-day moving averages, the simple and the exponential, and they're sitting right uh, slightly above the 50-day exponential simple moving average here on the chart, which is around 67.55. All right, and uh, what's going to be very important is to continue to watch this area right here. If you guys remember, 67.38 was the level that we were tracking from this range. 
<clears throat> they trapped some longs and above that range. They washed them out, and they took them right back up. And remember, we've been trying to work our way through this whole little band of support. And the fact that for the past two weeks, we finally got above that level. Then we were consolidating above the level. And now it doesn't seem like we're going to hold up, like we're going to come right back down. That's not a good sign because now uh, these people could be uh, trapped for all this action. The same way these people were trapped right here. And they got washed out and then tricked back into the market. The same way these people that got along the triple Qs all in this area right here it could be tricked in the market. And then we could get the big breakdown and be a lot of people positioned on the wrong side of the trade. Those are just different scenarios that you want to have planned out in your uh, in your trading plan as you approach the market or as you say as you approach the triple Qs. Obviously, um, we're going to need confirmation to see if we could break down or not. If we don't break down, we're going to be looking for a move back up towards the 68.60 level. And the reason why I'm saying break down because you're starting to see the market act a little bit uh, bearish intraday. You're starting to see the breath starting to show some uh, more of a bearish tone. You're starting to see some intraday stocks that rally up, get shorted right back down to the uh, to the lows. You're starting to see the market get. You're starting to see the market roll over when it makes uh, <coughs> when it makes those lower highs throughout the day. Now, some dip bars came in the market today. Then we had some sellers coming back into the close. The dip bars are still in the market a little bit. Again, we sold off today. The dip buys came in around 2 o'clock, pushed the market back up, and then the sellers were able to try to knock it right back down to, towards the lows. The uh, characteristic that we got to watch for that's going to give us a clue that, okay, something's really changing here, is once those dip buyers do not step in during the session and we close near the lows and then we get the same type of action the following day. That's going to tell you that the support levels are pretty much breaking down and people aren't looking to buy against those levels anymore. People are actually looking for the prices to come down in these equities and people will be looking to maybe short, start shorting rallies in weak names or start positioning themselves in these inverse ETFs or start buying some volatility. So that's how the triple Qs are looking. Let's go and take a look at the dollar chart, the dollar futures. All right, dollar futures showed a little bit of weakness today. Actually, pretty much they traded sideways today. They, did, they didn't actually really do much here. Same thing for the euro. Let me bring this euro. This is a euro 30 minute chart, by the way. Euro dollar. Um, euro over USD. Traded sideways for most of the session here today. And so did the dollar. So, you know, we'll have to definitely take a look and see what these currencies uh, do going into tomorrow's sessions. The euro dollar chart that I've been showing you guys here. All right, inside the channels, it's breaking down. Take off the study so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. If you guys have been watching the videos and and keeping up with the action here. We've been showing you guys how the market's been trading, how this euro's been trading in our proprietary channel analysis. And right now, the euro is finally starting to make its way down towards this little area right here, which we're tracking because that was, that was the same consolidation that we had before we broke out right here, which we called out in our video back there in January. And we also called the breakdown right here. Oh, this nice little consolidation range in our channel um, right here. Okay, and now the euro's pretty much chopping around here grinding lower we have to continue to watch that action in the euro alright let's take a look at the gold uh, starting off with the gold futures as you guys know gold futures had a nice move up today uh, it's second actually it's, it's uh, let's see here one two three four fourth consecutive day where it has closed above the key 1600 level we're looking for a push up above these 1620s to possibly make a move back up towards the top of this little trend line that we have from our channel right here which is around uh, 16 1641. All right, now I know a lot of you guys watch the GOD, so we'll take a look at the GOD here shortly. Just fixing this chart, so you can see again, gold futures are back inside the channel. They did hold the hold the bottom of the channel down there, which we were tracking. They triggered for a buy right on this little level right here, and since then the buys have been coming in against that 1580 level, buying the dips each and every day. All right, next level to watch again is over 1620. We get over 1620, then we have 1640 in the cards. Okay. Um, and we'll go over more of this action in the weekend review video, which you can find on our website, wallstreettrading.com, in the archive section, or our YouTube channel, My Wall Street TV, people. So let's take a look at the GLD. All right, the GLD was up 87 cents today, up 0.56%. It's right there near the top of the resistance, right here at 156, half 156. Uh, actually, 157 is the top of this resistance level right here. All right, so we have all this resistance right here, 156.82, 157. Above all the little short-term moving averages. One second. We're above all the short-term moving averages here. 
still needs some volume to come in to kind of confirm that this action can continue to the top side. His volume is not really stepping up as as, as there's not uh, big bars coming in. There are some little dip bars coming in, but not any big bars that show us with volume that they're really trying to get in this market right now. So we have to wait and see for this one right here. But GLD looks pretty good. Gap fill action is all the way up here around 150, uh, 158.30. Okay, some gap fill action right there. All right, uh, gold miners, GDX, a nice move up today, up two, up over 2.5%, getting some nice traction finally a little bit as we're trying to work our way outside of this little, uh, this little chop action, sideways action that we have here. We finally got a nice little close above 38. All right, let me take off this little trend line right here. So we finally got a nice little close above 38, which you guys see has been acting as resistance uh, for the past two weeks and earlier um, this week. And now the next target is going to be up here towards 39.17. We're above our little short-term moving average right here. It looks pretty good. Want to see another confirmation higher close to kind of confirm that we could get some legs on this move up. So that's the next target to watch, 39.17. We break below um, today's lows, we can make a move back down towards 37 and then maybe back down towards 36.53 if this is a little fluff up. But the volume looks pretty good. You can see the volume pattern shows us that there's some nice buyers coming in today. And we have to continue to watch this to see if we get a confirm close higher with some more volume picking up to the top side. GDX. Silver SLV is trading in a range between 27.50 and 28.50. Um, you can see now gold starting to show a little bit more, uh, starting to show a little bit of relative weakness. I'm sorry, relative strength. In the, in the precious metal sector compared to silver and copper. All right, uh, silver is trading sideways. Gold is actually trying to move its way up. And copper is, is, of course, trading weak. For the past couple of days when I've been doing the midday market update video, um, copper has been the precious metal or the commodity that has been down out of the precious metals there. All right, so over 28.50 in the SLV, we're going to be looking for a target up here towards 29. Again, a close above 28.50 would be a good sign. And um, that's really what you want to see. You want to see a nice green bar if you're looking to get long silver, if you're bullish on silver. In the meantime, you still need to know that's basically trading in a range between 27.50 and 28.50 still. All right, since I talked about copper, let's go take a quick look at copper via the copper futures. All right, I have not looked at this chart since last weekend. All right, and copper futures are below that key 355 level that we highlighted in the prior videos here. And, um, you know, copper going down is not a good sign for global growth obviously if global growth was happening copper would be showing at least some type of demand or at least some type of a uh, decent action not trading down like it has been doing since uh, early February so that's another thing to keep in watch uh, if we continue moving down in copper we're going to be looking for a move down here towards this $3.30 level I know a lot of you guys use the JJC to watch that intraday so uh, let's take a look at JJC real quick since I do call out the JJC price during our midday market update, JJC, as you can see, is in a nice little downtrend below all the moving averages. JJC looks like it wants to go back down towards these lows down here around uh, 4168 if it continues to trend down. All right, let's take a look at that volatility index, and we'll take a look at a couple key stocks, of course. Volatility index, VIX, uh, popped right back up today after having a little pause day yesterday. Uh, VIX is starting to show you some some more green action. We're starting to see some nice green bars this week, showing you that there's definitely some buyers in the VIX. Want definitely want to see what's going to happen next week. If we get over 15 and get a nice close above 15 on the VIX, we're most likely probably going to be looking for a move back up towards the 16s and 17s. Now, is there going to be some type of news that's going to take us up to those levels? We'll have to wait and see. We do have the news out of Cyprus that's causing some headline uh, some headline. Um, action as far as when they release a statement out of Europe or something regarding that uh, Cyprus uh, financial, um, you know, or that, that whole Cyprus fiasco, I should say, um, you know, we usually get a nice little pop down or a nice little pop up if it's good news. So keep that in mind. So, all right, so let's take a look at some stocks here. All right, just want to do a whole macro view. I know I do the whole macro view first and then I do the uh, stock view, so bear with me. And it's always good to go over everything before you take a look at the stocks and see what's going on with the market. But Apple, uh, you know, hit our target, or at least close to our target, which was 465, 466 against its declining 50-day simple moving average. Uh, had a nice little pop today, but closed back down to the lows. I think this, I really think this is a stock to stay away from. I know some people try to trade it, and they trade it well intraday. Uh, some people try to trade it well intraday, and they do not. They fail. So, I mean, you know, the easiest trade on Apple was to be short. Now it's kind of just moaning around here between 480 resistance and 420 lows right here and uh, made it made a nice move on Monday and it's given uh, made a nice move on Monday pop, popped up and gapped up on Tuesday and it's basically giving all that action back I really don't see nothing to do here 
unless you uh, watch Apple on a daily basis and you trade it for scalps intraday and you know how to take backs and trades and and you and you know this is like your main vehicle that you trade which I know some traders that do that you know they do well but for some of you guys that are trying to position yourselves in Apple and you guys don't watch it every day and you guys don't trade it every day uh, you know this is a stock that I really don't see nothing to do with it right now there's better trades out there all right Amazon AMZN the Amazon was trapped a whole bunch of people long above 270 after felling off this little bullish move that it tried to make right here from this nice little up move sideways consolidation buyers came in then they had a pause down that Wednesday then it failed from the news that came out regarding the Foxconn and now it's to the downside one two three four five six days down in a row just look like sellers have taken control in this stock now not a stock that you want to be looking at to the long side until we get some type of reversal signal reversal signal and this stock looks like it wants to head down towards these 250s all right, maybe even the 200-day moving average, which is around 246.28, which is about seven bucks away still. So still some more downside in Amazon. Let's go ahead and take a look at eBay. Since we're talking about the whole eBay Amazon thing, eBay had some nice, uh, showed some nice relative strength today. I um, definitely want to keep an eye on eBay if it makes a move back over, say, 53.25 or so. Um, really want to see it over 53.70.54 though. Oracle was definitely in the news today. Oracle wasn't in play. We actually made some nice at money in this to the downside. You can take a look at the midday market update to see how I explained it. Oracle, crazy grab da gap down here, but it's sitting right on top of its 200-day simple moving average, which is around 31.97. Call it 32. Um, levels to work off of tomorrow going into uh, tomorrow's session with Oracle. It's today's lows. If it breaks below 32.18, expect it to touch 32 and then possibly break through 32 for a move down towards 31.60s. Um, and let me take a look at the 60 minute chart here. If we break back above today's highs around 33.20, look for some gap fill action. But this thing looks like it wants to trade lower. I believe from, you know, we caught this for a nice move uh, in the last hour here. But you can see a level that you want to watch in the stock ones tomorrow is around this 32.50 level. You can see there's a seller working his, working his sell orders around this range in this little five cent tight range. This thing was trading in for the past, you know, for like an hour here before it broke down. And this is where we got short at. We got short at 32 at 32.39, and we we're able to make a little quick scout for 10 cents. Obviously, this thing, if it had more time, if we had more time, um, this thing probably would have rolled over off this little nice little range break play. But at the moment. Uh, you know, it dropped about 15 cents or so, and we're gonna be watching this one for tomorrow. All right, just know that there's a seller working his order up there around 32.50. It's going to be a key level to watch in the morning part of the session on this stock there. All right, what else? What else do we want to talk about? IBM. Let's take a look at IBM. I have not looked at this chart for the past two days. I do know that we've been talking about the stock ever since it broke above this little key trend line that we had right here at 203.17 from the nice channel that we were tracking. All right, take off the study so you guys can see that a little bit cleaner here. So from this nice channel that we were tracking, when it broke past 203, we've been talking about getting along the stock. The stock had a nice move from 203 all the way to 216. I'm talking about 13 bucks there. I'm talking about 10 bucks there, folks. Actually, not 10 bucks. Sorry, I, I did say the right thing the first time. Talking about a $13 move there in IBM. Pulled back today from a gap down. Um, you know, this thing may need to kind of build some 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 type of support around this 208 208 area. Excuse me. Around this 208 area, then we'll see what happens with the stock. Um, 216 short-term resistance, um, 208 or 209 there's maybe some short-term support from these little lows that we had right here. So IBM, you know, had a nice little move, formed a nice little hammer today. Was bought off the lows, nice little uh, move off the lows today. But again, still looks like it needs to pull back a bit after having this nice uh, quick momentum move here. All right, I know some guys were watching Triple D today. I do not trade the stock. But I know some guys in the uh, chat room was talking about Triple D and all over Twitter, so I just want to bring it up real quick. This stock pretty much got cut in half, which is crazy, as everybody was all hyped about the uh, 3D printing. The stock got cut in half. And one thing you can watch is a nice little downtrend right here. If we break the downtrend line, um, you can maybe look for a move to the top side. It's pretty much trading a nice little downward channel right here. But over 30, I would say over 32, and a close above that could get this thing for uh, popping back up, possibly towards 38. Um, Again, the market's getting kind of frothy, frothy, getting kind of weak. So keep an eye on this one. This one may need to base out a little bit here before it tries to get a bounce that people are looking for. All right, let's talk about the banks. Goldman Sachs was one of the weaker stocks on my change from open list today. You can see here Goldman Sachs breaking back below the 50-day simple moving average and breaking below the support right here. So anybody that was long this stock, you know, for the past two weeks here that you know caught the move right here or put a, or put their stop below that level right there, they're pretty much stopped out. 
And if we continue to break down tomorrow, those people that are trying to give it a chance are going to start feeling more pain, then, then they're going to get stopped out. And this stock, you know, we're going to see. <laughs> this stock uh, had a nice smooth move up that there's really no congestion to the left of this action right here to work off of. So therefore, that means this thing can have a nice price action smooth wave, elevator way back, right back down the same way it had a nice elevator move up because there's no congestion that's going to have anybody looking to buy against any support levels because the major support level on the stock is really not until around here, like around 130 or so, all right, where I had this little slight congestion right here that we broke out of. All right, That's something to keep in mind. Uh, Citibank, let's take a look at Citibank real quick. Citibank was down $0.86 cents a day, still above the 20-day simple moving average right there, around 44.70. But this one as well had a nice little move up. And it's pulled back about 38% of that move or so. I would assume just by estimating by looking at the chart. <laughs> not exact. But, um, you know, Citigroup's not looking that bad compared to Goldman Sachs. Uh, J.P. Morgan. Let's take a look at J.P. Morgan. Everybody's watching J.P. Morgan. I mentioned the fact that J.P. Morgan had this nice little possible trap action in play after moving out of this nice little range, sucking some longs into the long side, and now putting them in a losing position for anybody that's long above 49.50. If we continue to get the sell side action, they're going to start feeling some pain, and we're going to be looking for a move back down towards 47.50, which I believe is the next target on this thing here. It's still above the rising 50-day simple moving average, exponential moving average around 48. All right, guys, uh, that's about it. I'm going to have some more research done tonight. I really just want to show you guys what's going on with some of the things I'm watching and what the general markets are doing in the commodity space and everything. Don't want to make this video too long. Hope you guys had a great trading day today. Again, if you have not been to our website yet, go check it out. I'll show you guys how to get there. Channel, I'm sorry, not channel, I got to trade it, but <laughs> wallstreettrading.com. If you would like to get access to our trading room, all you have to do is go to our home page, fill out this form for the 14-day free trial. And of course, after the 14 days, we're not charging for the room right now, so you're more than welcome to stay in the room. A lot of great calls going on, a lot of good stuff, a lot of uh, good research that's being done. All you have to do is put your first name, last name, email, hit the button, and you will get an email with the credentials to log into the room within a matter of two minutes or so. So that's about it, folks. Have a great day. If you're interested in trading with our firm as well, you can contact me at ccooper at wallstreettrading.com. Check out the Facebook page, Wall Street Trading. Cheers.